Okay, in the uh, case 2-1, the prosecution has appealed a single ground, and that is a decision that both the pretrial chamber and the trial chamber took before the start of the trial, which held that one form of what is called the extended form of joint criminal enterprise did not apply at the ECCC because they held that it was not part of customary international law as of 1975. Now, what this means is that um, the joint criminal enterprise applies when a group of per persons have a common plan or common purpose which they share to commit crimes within the jurisdiction of the court. In the, in, under the theory of joint criminal pro, um, enterprise, each of the participants is responsible for crimes that are committed in furtherance of that enterprise, whether they themselves committed that crime or not. In the extended form of joint criminal enterprise, which is the subject of the appeal, the uh, theory also holds that even if the crime was not part of the criminal plan that was agreed upon, if it was a foreseeable result of the plan, and the accused realized that and willingly accepted that risk, they can be held responsible. So joint criminal enterprise, the third form, this extended form, has been used, for example, to hold leaders responsible for plans to forcibly deport populations to ethnically cleanse areas of the former Yugoslavia, and they were held responsible in the third form for killings that resulted, which the judges held were a foreseeable result, and they had to know that and willingly accept that risk. So it's a very technical issue of international criminal law that could affect future cases here, cases not yet decided here, but also could have an effect on other cases around the world. 